On this episode of Doing the Most, we are making Jack Keller's recipe for a very simple red raspberry wine. Moment brews and various artists, everything from meat to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. Raspberry? Rasp? Berry? Rasp? Berry? Ras raspberry, raspberry. This is another recipe in our series of making Jack Keller's country fruit wines. Jack was a brilliant winemaker who ran a blog for many, many years on home country fruit winemaking, and then wrote the book on how to make country fruit wines. This video is sponsored in part by Homebrew Ohio. They provided some of the gear and equipment to make this video series possible. So big shout out, big thank you to Homebrew Ohio for believing in this Jack Keller wine series. Any of the gear and equipment, things that you see used in this video, you should be able to find a link down in the description where you can purchase those and your purchase helps benefit our channel so we can keep producing great homebrew content here on YouTube. Thank you so much, Homebrew Ohio, for making this series possible. So, red raspberry wine. This is a wildly simple recipe. It does a couple of things differently than the other recipes you may have seen so far in this series, including it's got dual nutrient addition. So you do diammonium phosphate at one point, and then you add another nutrient called Fermade K a little bit later on in fermentation when you take the fruit bag out of the bucket. There are not a lot of moving parts in this recipe, just a few additional things that you will need to make this happen. And it makes a very loudly red raspberry wine on the other end of things. A uh, few notes, we have been making all of Jack Keller's wines dry. We're not doing any stabilizing or back sweetening on these. So this is a dry red raspberry wine. And additionally, the same critique I typically have of his recipe applies here. You generally have less than a gallon when you move from primary fermentation to secondary fermentation. So you either wanna scale up the recipe a little bit or have a slightly smaller vessel, maybe a three quart vessel for racking to secondary instead of a one gallon vessel if you're gonna be leaving it for a while with some of that air on top in the headspace. Here we cold crash this to get it nice and clear and so it didn't spend very much time in secondary at all before it went into bottles. So with all that out of the way, let's dive into this very simple red wine recipe by first taking a look at our ingredients. The ingredients for Jack Keller's raspberry wine are three pounds of red raspberries, one pound 11 ounces of granulated sugar, water to one gallon, four teaspoons of pectic enzyme, one teaspoon of yeast nutrient, here we're using diammonium phosphate, half a teaspoon of yeast energizer, and one gram of Fermade K. The diammonium phosphate will act as our first nutrient addition and the Fermade K will act as our second nutrient addition. This just makes sure the yeast have plenty of nutrition in their diet. Our yeast for this will be Lalvin's RC212, a red wine yeast. So as you can see here, not a whole lot of complexity. A big fruit load, quite a bit of sugar in here to bring that ABV up into more of a standard wine territory. And other than that, you're adding some nutrients and you're fermenting. So it's pretty easy, fairly simple. Let's take a look at the process. We begin by heating some water. I'm just gonna pop this water in the microwave to get it just shy of boiling. We want it warm enough that we can dissolve the sugar into a syrup. And then we're going to pack our raspberries into bags. I'm using a couple of muslin straining bags here. They're like 50 cents a piece at the brew shop. And I'm gonna pack them pretty full and tie a knot at the top so nothing gets out. And then those go right into our sanitized brewing bucket. This is a two gallon bucket from Homebrew Ohio. And the water comes out of the microwave and we will dissolve our sugar. That goes right into the sugar bowl. And then we'll give that a nice stir, stir, stir until it goes crystal clear. Voila. Then that will be poured right on top of those thawed out raspberries. 
And then we'll get that topped up to just over the one gallon mark. And then our yeast energizer goes in, followed by our first dose of yeast nutrient. And then our pectic enzyme. And then we pitch our yeast right on top. And we'll sanitize our lid and get that sealed up. And we will revisit that again the next day. So for the first several days, you're gonna open that up and just move the bag around to press the bag and kind of punch the cap on that fruit. You don't want the brew bags to get dried out on top and risk growing mold or some other sort of infection. So just go ahead and press them down for the first few days. Then after about a week, once your gravity gets down close to 1.030, we're gonna grab those bags out of there before fermentation is done. This kind of allays any concerns about oxidization during this part because you're removing the bags while the yeast could still use any oxygen that you mix in. So you see here, Jack does recommend using a hydrometer to know where you're at in fermentation so you can go on to the step, but he does not include an anticipated starting gravity for this recipe. I went ahead and ran it through a calculator so we'll know what the ABV on this is. You know, some of the sugars for this are locked up inside those raspberries. So taking a hydrometer reading with one of these at the beginning wouldn't really tell you where the ABV is. Fortunately, calculators let us do that. Then we can take the final gravity with our hydrometer and have a really good estimate of what our final ABV in this wine is. So very gently and without sticking our sanitized hand too far into the wine, we'll just pull those bags out and let them drain in a clean sanitized bowl. And then we'll press out any remaining juice in the bags with another sanitized bowl, just squeezing the bag between the two bowls. And we'll add our other dose of yeast nutrient. and then we'll seal that up until it's done. So that goes away for another couple of weeks, and then we rack it from primary into secondary, so that way it can finish clearing up. And as you can see, it's bright red and already relatively clear. Throw that under an airlock and give it another few weeks. And after that, we get it bottled up. Easy peasy. As you saw there, I put these in regular old 12 ounce crown cap bottles with oxygen absorbing crown caps. You could use regular wine bottles and corks. You could use flip top bottles, anything like that that's really gonna hold a good seal, but I felt like this was really the easiest way to go for bottling this wine for quick drinking. I don't think these are gonna sit around a while. All right, let's open her up. This better still be Technicolor because that color right out of fermentation and in bottling was really impressive and I'd hate to lose any of that big bold red. Yeah, that's nice. Very, very red. The color has deepened just a bit in the bottle, but Still very, very red. That nose just smells like fresh raspberries. You can smell, it smells like there's a little bit of sweetness here, even though we fermented this dry and did no sweetening, there should be no residual sugars. But it smells like fresh, sweet fruit. If I just gave this to you for like a blind taste test, and you picked up the aroma on top of that glass, you would know this was raspberry. It is unmistakably raspberry, and that's pretty cool that that aroma was retained so well in this wine. All right, let's get in there. Yeah, it's all raspberry, and it is quite dry. 
but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I do think some people would want this sweeter, probably back sweetened to a hydrometer reading of about 1.01 or 1.015 would be enough sweetness to kind of bring some of that berry juicy fruitiness back as it is it drinks very much like a tart kind of white wine kind of flavor but with that nice berryness in there i mean kind of like a white zinfandel i guess it's got that acidity and that brightness and that little bit of like a rush of tannin across the tongue while still having a nice big identifiable fruit flavor in there. As it opens up, that tannin gets grippier and grippier to where you can feel that raspberry flavor kind of hanging out down the middle of your tongue. It's a bit young yet. I could see this probably really coming into its own probably three or four months from now. At this point, it's about seven, almost eight months old, but it is really refreshing for a berry wine that is just a single varietal berry. It makes me kind of want to experiment more with raspberry forward ferments, probably in mead rather than wine, because I do like the richness and and bigness that honey and especially back sweetening with honey gives to a ferment made with berries. Thinking like a real raspberry heavy hibiscus infused mead with like a little bit of like toasted cacao nibs in there but really leaning into this big intense tart almost puckering raspberry flavor could be a whole lot of fun. It is evidence, as many of Jack Keller's recipes are, that sometimes you can do something really simple, really geared toward a self-balancing recipe that doesn't need a lot of you know, lemon juice or tea or raisins or any of that other stuff in it. Just letting the fruit itself do the work and making sure it has good nutrition so the fermentation goes off flawlessly. If you like this episode, you should check out the rest of our episodes in our Jack Keller playlist. And of course, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new upcoming content. And you should join our community. We have a Discord community at discord.doingthemost.org. And there are lots of really incredible brewers, winemakers, and mead makers there that are just the most amazing community, super helpful. And I've really made some great friends in our Discord community over the last few years. And so I really appreciate everyone that hangs out there. Y'all are awesome. You can also follow us on Instagram, check out our website, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what you really want to go do is make some raspberry wine. Until next time, happy brewing, happy vintning. Make good country fruit wines. I know you can. Cheers.